All right, so here we're going to find the maximum value of f on the interval from zero to pi. We justify our answer. So we're gonna essentially just find the derivative of the function, find the critical values, and then basically see what's going on at those critical values in between them. So um, let's go ahead, let's do that. Let's find the critical values of f of x. So we'll find the derivative of f of x, f prime of x will be two plus the derivative of two x, which is two times the derivative of the cosine of x, which is the negative sine of two x. Or we'll just have two times one minus the sine of two x. All right, so we have to find now where the, the derivative is zero or where it's undefined. We're gonna make this equal to zero. All right, so for this equation to be zero, that means one minus the sine of two x has to be zero. And then so that means the sine of 2x has to be 1. And the way you want to approach this is basically think of like, when is the sine equal to 1? And then you're going to make the inside equal to that, you know, that value. So remember, using a unit circle, and we're only going from zero to pi. So the sine of the sine of pi over two, on, so on the side here, the sine of pi over two is equal to one. So what we do then is make two x equal to pi over two. And then we solve for x. And then so then x is pi. No, x is not by x, it's pi over four. My algebra wrong. Multiply or divide both by two or multiply this by one fourth. Okay, so we have one critical value at x is pi over, pi over four. And um, we just basically just break the interval up because um, we're going from zero to pi, so we just break it up at that one point. So let's look at what's going on with the function on table here. From zero to pi over four. And then from pi over four to pi. You want to see what the sine of the derivative is. What's the sine of f prime of x on those numbers? So we simply just plug a number in that's plug a number in each of those intervals into f prime of x. And we just care about the sign. We don't really actually care about the value. We just care whether it's positive or negative. Um, so let's, you know, if we were to plug in just sign, uh, we're going to plug in f. It's in here, we'll have like f prime of pi over 6. And then in here, we're going to have f prime of pi over 2. And we just pick numbers that are in here. All right, one in here and one in here. So f prime of pi over six, plug it into my derivative equation. So plug it into this, or maybe probably easier, easier here to calculate. Doesn't technically matter. So it will just be two minus two times the sine of two pi over six, or times the sine of two pi over six, or times the sine of pi over three. Sine of pi over three is, you know, root three over two. So this will be two minus two times root three over two. So it'll be two minus root three. And so this is greater than zero, so this is a positive number, so positive. 
and then we look at what f prime of pi over two would be. More space than f prime of f prime of pi over two. If we plug pi over, pi over two into the derivative equation again, we'll get you know two minus the sine of two times pi over two, so it's times the sine of pi. Write the two here. Two minus two times the sine of pi. 2 minus the sine of pi is 0, so just 2 minus 0, so that'll just be 0. Or no, that'll be 2, is what I meant to say. So it's positive again. Positive. So you're like, well, what's going on then? Well, that just means that there's no um, relative minimum or maximum um, at this point, because this just tells you the function, tells you that f of x is increasing throughout the entire interval. It's going, it's increasing and increasing. It probably flattens out here. Um, that's why we get like a critical value of zero there. Um, but it's always, the derivative is always positive. So it's always increasing. So there are no, um, there are, there's not, a, there's not gonna be a relative minimum or maximum here, but now we make sure we check the endpoints. So we can check endpoints, make, cause then we just have to see, um, what the values that the endpoints are. Like the endpoints are zero and pi. Now, um, the thing is, if it's always increasing, we know that the maximum is gonna be at pi because it's increasing all along the interval from zero to pi. So, it, so whatever value it is at zero, it's gonna be more at pi because the value of the function is increasing. And so, um, We just find the function value of pi. We don't find the derivative value. We want to find the actual function value. F of pi will just be 2 pi. Remember, plug it into the original function here. 2 pi plus the cosine of 2 pi. So cosine of 2 pi, as we all know, is 1. So F prime of pi. 2 pi plus 1. And so this will be your max value, this will be your max. This will be your max value on this interval 0 to pi. I'm not writing my pi is going to be rewriting my pi so much better than this. Alright. Um, Part B, that part took a lot longer than expect, expected. Hopefully part B won't take that long, but um, yeah. So we, here we're gonna use the um, mean value theorem and we're gonna, you know, first have to explain how we, that, that we can use it. Basically, you know, just to find that, uh, just to find that it's okay to use them because it meets the conditions. So when you have the mean value theorem, mean value theorem, MBT, and you need to make sure you memorize this um, because this is this is um, a big deal for like the AP exam. A big deal. I mean, there's most most likely going to be a free response problem that will be based on this, and it's not very hard. But um, you know, you don't want it to be like catch you off guard because they, they, this problem can be very technically graded. Like meaning that you just miss one little, you know, maybe you think it's something meaningless, but um, um, it, the grade is going to be getting up. Anyways, the, 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 two con, the two conditions you want to check are always going to be that, that the function is continuous, that f of x is continuous on the closed interval that we're talking about, so on, on 0 to pi, and that it's differentiable on the open interval. So make sure you just say that it's it's continuous on the closed interval and differentiable on the open interval. Um, now, the, depending on, I guess, maybe your professor, your teacher, um, how you justify this, you're not, don't worry about going into some like 10 page proof and showing that, you know, this equation 
you know, um, continuous, um, usually you'll have just, you know, something that where you, you can just say, say that continuous because it's a, it's a, it's a trig function or it's a polynomial. Um, that's usually enough. See, so it's, see, it's continuous because it's a, because it's a, it's um, a polynomial or it's continuous with it's a trig function. Um, on the answer key um, from the graders, they actually didn't mention that. They just left their answer like this. So most of the times it'll be okay for just if you just mention these two things like this. All right, so now, um, now we're gonna apply the mean value theorem. And the mean value theorem is basically saying there exists a value in the interval We could say there exists an X or let's say a, a, a C, can I call it AC? The C value on the open interval is zero to pi, such that the derivative of C, the derivative of the function evaluated C, so F prime of C, such that F prime of C will be equal basically to the um to the slope connecting the slope of the line connecting the endpoints of this interval. So basically remember it this this will be one endpoint, this will be another. And we think of this as like remember A A to B. So there exists a C on the open interval zero to pi such that F prime of C will be equal to F of B minus F of A over B minus A. In this case, F of pi minus F of zero over pi minus zero. And then we just, we just show that this works. So we find um, we find what the value is. We find it by because we have the equation for f. Um, we found what f prime of pi was already. F prime of pi was, or not f prime of pi, f of pi, we found it to be two pi plus one. F of zero, so that'll be zero plus a cosine of zero. So zero plus a cosine of zero, which will just be one over pi. And this will just be two pi over pi. So it'll just be two. So you know where do you go from here? So you want to basically find that that value on the interval where if you took the derivative of that at evaluated at that at that number you're gonna get two. You basically you're gonna get a slope of two at some x value between zero to pi. So remember, c is just an, is, is just a, a represent represent an x value on zero to pi. So um, what we do is we just set this equal to the derivative of uh, f prime of c and solve for the c essentially. So um, we already found that we already found our derivative. Let's just write it again. I'll write it again over here. F prime of x, we found it to be, you know, 2 minus 2 times the sine of 2x. So um, remember, the derivative is just the slope. And that's what this is right here. And that's what this is. So essentially, you want to just set this equal to 2. You're just going to set 2 minus 2 times the sine of and remember, the c is just that x value. So we just the sine of 2c, you could say, is equal to 2. Let me just solve for that c value, or that x value. And there's a lot of 2s going on in here. But it's OK. Take away 2. We'll get negative 2 the sine of 2c is equal to 0. Find the negative 2. It'll get 0 again. So we'll get the sine of 2c is equal to zero. We have to find when is what, like where is the sign of, of what value equals zero. And then we set that equal to 
to here. So on the interval, remember, um, you can set the sign, the sign will be equal to, to zero at when you're taking the sign of pi. So we're gonna set, let me just put, let me put to the side here, the sign of pi is equal to zero. So we make pi equal to 2c. And then c will just be pi over 2. And now they're your answer. That's all there is to it.